Hey, Off-White Coat listeners, it is my privilege to get to tell you about this sweet deal from our friends over at Pygmonic. If you haven't heard about Pygmonic, it is a fantastic picture-based mnemonic platform that can certainly help out any student. Most of the videos are around two minutes long and provide a quick and effective way to memorize material for any upcoming medical exam. It is extremely efficient. They have this search bar function where you can search playlists on general topics like renal to step one to step two, or even first aid and other books. If you want to review the Pygmonic for later, you can even make a playlist of your own. Pygmonic even has this repetition algorithm that is spaced out according to your learning needs. This helps with increasing long-term retention and allows you to review the right information at the right time. One of my favorite functions is the quizzes that are associated with each Pygmonic. I'll take the quiz first and then learn about the associated pictures and what facts I need to sharpen up on. Honestly, Pygmonic is a fantastic tool, and if you use our code off white coat, you'll get 20% off. That's off white coat with no spaces. So what are you waiting for? Make studying the easiest part of your day. Sign up with Pygmonic and use off white coat to save yourself some money. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Off White Coat Podcast. I am your host, Jordan Abney, and today I'm joined again by Mary Bess. We're going to start today on a solemn note. One of my friends back on the island, one of my colleagues, a student at St. George's University, a great man, honestly good person to people all around, Dom, he passed recently. He was so close to finishing med school, and it, honestly, very solemn. It's been weighing on my heart. I didn't even really want to bring this up. But my condolences go out to his family. Uh, it's super tragic. He was an all-time high about to finish med school, and it just shows how short life can be. Yeah, yeah. Lots of prayers to the family, and I know he had a lot of friends on the island. He was always really nice to me. I remember yeah, great he, guy. he would always play basketball with you. Yeah. We were on the shittiest intramural basketball team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. But he always tried his best at basketball, and I'm sure he oh, tried good. his best at school. And he was always such a people person and mm-hmm. would come to our house parties and just always have a smile on his face. That's what I remember about him. I didn't know him too well, but kind of knew him. Yeah, I mean, we most of our interactions were from basketball, but he he was always so nice and always traveled with a gaggle of people because that's how you know he was always yeah just fun person to be around and so it's super sad if family needs anything or i can help in any way please reach out to me but yeah i mean that's just a sad moment right um, check on your friends everyone check on your friends because life's just too short and anything and everything can happen all at once yeah you never know you never know so we wanted to start this off by just Sending our condolences to his family and friends, and Mm -hmm. we hate to hear about this tragedy and hope that everyone can just move on the best way possible. Mm -hmm. Passed on top, though, like a warrior in battle. So yeah, so this this episode's for you, Dom. There you go. Now we we got to make sure not to disappoint. (laughs) That that's sorry, Dom. Sorry, Dom. (laughs) He'll understand. Yeah. So one thing we could talk about to begin with is, did you hear about the medical school that kind of lied about their step scores? SGU? And the- <laughs> I'm just <laughs> yes. uh, Not Yes? No, no, no. Oh. Know. Let's hope not. If they did, I mean, hey. Let's hope they lied about yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well said, well said. Yeah. Touche. Wait, so Touché. is it SGU or not? No, no, no. It was St. James Medical School. Where is St. James? Yeah, I think it's in Anguilla. Where is that? Which is an island in the Caribbean. Okay. I don't think I've ever heard of that. You never heard of Anguilla? Not really. That just sounds like some type of lizard to me. I mean, you are right. It's like right near the Virgin Islands. So, yeah, it's at the top, like right close to Puerto Rico and the Dominican and all that. But anyway, so... St. James. So St. James had had just gone into a huge lawsuit because <clears throat> essentially they lied about their step scores and their match scores. Wow. And, you know, to get students to come join. So that's like a big thing with most of the Caribbean medical schools. And it was definitely the way that SGU and like the top three schools like SGU, Ross, 
and AUC and mm-hmm. some of those other top schools, like that's how they prove their dominance is they say like, hey, we have this step score. This like these many rate. people have this match rate. Uh-huh. And that's one of the reasons that I chose to go to SU. Like I, I knew people that went to SU mm-hmm. and they would talk about it and how people perceived SU. You know, I knew it wasn't like a scam school. Gotcha. Uh, well, you for the most think part. it is. <laughs> I bet those people who went to St. James also thought the same. Yeah. I mean, you just don't want them to lie to you. And if yeah. they're saying they have a step score, an average step score of this and a match rate, and we're definitely going to get you a residency, you want to have some reassurance in that, especially if you're paying all this money to go. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They don't pay you back your money if you don't get a residency, which actually that might be a thing. You know, that should be... If you did four years of medical school and tried but didn't get the grades, they should just give you back your money. You shouldn't owe thousands upon thousands of dollars just and then have no way of paying it back. I agree. That's a good. You know? That's a good idea. Like it is what it is. They yeah. The school did, should yeah. pay back those students. If they if they, if you don't get kicked out or like you know, but just because if you attempted and failed, there should be no repercussions. You shouldn't get be in debt your whole life. No, I agree. Hmm. I don't know that because you have to, the school has to pay for that time that you were there, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. That's some food for thought. Either way. So St. James, they've been lying about their step scores and their match scores. So they said that their test pass rate was a 95. Uh Like like how many people pass step in their class? Yeah. It was actually like 35%. They said it was 95 and it was 35. That's a huge difference. I wish I remembered exactly what, yeah. And then the match rate was, they said it was 83%, uh-huh. but it was actually 63%. Oh, my yeah. God. A lot of international medical schools do this where they have a test at the very end of schooling part of medical school, which is the first two years, just to make sure that you're ready for step one so you don't fail it. So right. that boosts their number. So they vetted students before they even took step one, mm-hmm. and then they still lied about their match rate so- or their, their step score. That's crazy. I'm looking at an article about it right now, and it says that um, St. James School of Medicine and its Illinois-based operators will have to pay $1.2 million towards refunds and debt cancellation for students harmed by its deceptive marketing. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I read, yeah. Yeah. So $1.2 mil to all the students. Which, I mean, I feel like they're just paying back like three of the students. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> honestly, thinking about your debt and comparing it, yeah. Yeah, they just paid back four people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, that's wild to even consider that you could be lied to about that. And I, evidently it had been going on for a couple of years, and that's why the settlement, it was, oh, people that have, have attended from 2016 to 2022 have the potential for this refund. Uh huh. So for over the past six years, yeah, your your recruiting, your marketing is not actually is just lied. It's just lying off of. Yeah, like just change the numbers to fit. To be honest, I mean, and if it's they did, that's the point. Well, I mean, to be honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't like just. But then they, no one would go. That's the thing. <sighs> I mean, you got a point there. I mean, I bet- people would so- go. I think people would always go, but. Now they it, might not be the best doctors. It's a know. lot of money to it is a lot pay of money. to go to a medical school that you're not really sure if Especially you'll get a on residency. An island. Even coming from St. George's, yeah, there it's more difficult for an international medical student to get into St. or get into a residency in America. I'm lucky because I'm American by birth, right? So that actually helps me. Like if I was, there's some people at St. George's that were Kenyan and they wanted to work in America. You have to be great beyond great to be able to jump across and jump into america even a bunch we have several friends who are canadian and that's still a struggle for them they have to get like go through this visa process and like their bank accounts don't switch over super easy and it's like a huge hassle honestly Mm -hmm. and they're right across the border (laughs) like a lot of them like did their rotations in new york which isn't far from canada yeah. But they still struggled to do all this. I don't know. I think that's one of the good things about SGU is the hold that it has on New York. And if you are Canadian mm-hmm. and you want to work in the United States, like you can, most of your rotations will be up there 
you know, that's not that far from Toronto, I believe, or something. I'm not sure about my. No, yeah, Toronto's not far. But yeah, you, you have like you can go to New York and, and like kind of show out like in, in front of these programs if you wanted to stay or, or do those programs, and it gives you like a foothold instead of you only going to Canadian places and then coming to the U.S. Like that was one of the beautiful things about SU is that if if you are coming in from another country, you got to go into America and work for at least a little bit. Yeah. Switching back to this news article, because I think I'm looking at the same one you looked at. It's on MedPage today. Mm. Is it false? I don't know. <laughs> it, you you guys can quote me news. on it Could later. Who news. knows? But I'm going to tell you what the article says. It says... Um, so the complaint also alleged that telemarketers used high pressure sales tactics to persuade consumers to pay a $55 application fee and a thousand dollar reservation fee to enroll. So telemarketers were instructed to try to collect the reservation fee during their outreach and telling the consumers they only had 48 hours to pay the fee or risk of losing their spot at the school. Oh my God. Which is, is flashbacks, I feel like, to you. They kind of did that to you. Maybe not the fees, but they were like, hey, if you want to come to our school, you need to sign up to interview within, like, this week. Do you remember that? Uh, it was quick. Like, no, it was definitely quick time because when fast. I I remember I applied to medical schools, and, you know, and I've been on the waiting list. And I applied to some DO schools and I wasn't going to go the Caribbean route just because I, my mom had done that. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be different. And then I, I don't know, it was like spur of the moment. And I just sent an application in almost late and mm-hmm. they called me and they were just like, OK, you're in. You got to do this one program. And oh, but the interview. Yeah. I mean, it was set up like within two to three weeks. And then from there, they I don't even think it was that long. I literally think it was like one to two. I mean, it was definitely quick, but I think I was late in the application process when I sent. Yeah, you definitely the, were. You were. In the form. In the form. But either way, I don't <laughs> but know. It was it's quick. just kind yeah. of like nerve wracking like, a did little you get bit. Test? Yeah. I don't think I had to pay. I'm sure I paid an application fee and everything, but I don't remember it being high intense sales tactics. But that's crazy because – those things work on people psychologically. They, Those things definitely do work on you psychologically because, like, even when we were trying to find a place to live in Jersey City and we were talking with that girl, what's her name, Cammy, our property oh, yeah, manager, whatever, yeah. and we're, she was like, I have to know by today. And we're like, well, this is, like, really sudden i don't know if she was pressuring us so hard and we could have negotiated better but we were under pressure because we only had like a week to move and mm-hmm. we were we felt obligated and all this stuff but the sales people really do use those tactics yeah to like it's either buy now or fear of losing out That's missing how it out is. even though hey I, I i'd bargain back with her i remember i shot her a couple of demands and i yeah, was like did. i'll sign right now mm-hmm and then she was like, well, Mr. D- when somebody that's trying to sell me something tells me I'm a good negotiator, I immediately think they got me already. Yeah. I'm like, dang, I should have asked for more. Should have asked for more. If someone goes, you're a good negotiator, I'll accept. I go, oh, dang shit, it. you got yeah. me. You got me. Man. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the sales tactics work. So if you have attended the St. James Medical School in Anguilla from the years of 2016 to 2022, you may be eligible for compensation. Good luck to you all. <laughs> Good luck. Um, speaking of money back, though, I did want to bring up, did you see that Biden is trying to pass, I guess, a bill? He's trying to get everyone with student debt $10,000 back. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's only like a penny to your, hmm. <laughs> your yeah. student debt. <laughs> Throw me a bigger bone, baby. Like, that doesn't even change the payment charges on your card uh yeah that doesn't even cover the interest no Biden, babe come um well i mean at least he's trying i'll give him that but that's a drop in the bucket. come on so come on the issue is that by the government giving out the federal loan mm-hmm. it allowed the colleges to completely just crank up their prices yeah to a, an absurd amount which yeah. they have which they have every i mean if you look at all of the 
institutions over the years mm-hmm. have increased. Mm-hmm. The issue is, it, since the government has agreed to pay those federal loans, the colleges, all this debt is because of that to begin with. Yeah. So for them to wipe that debt, because now we owe the federal government the money. Mm-hmm. To be honest, it, it should just be kind of like, oh, you know, that was kind of our blunder. Our, our bad. <laughs> I mean, we are the kind of the reason that you're in debt, you know, and we kind of let it happen like that. You know, they... It's not like they didn't notice Stanford just keeps increasing their prices. It's not like they didn't notice that during COVID, when everybody had to go back, I remember this was like a news article, like the price of Stanford stayed the same, Mm -hmm. even though the students weren't even in the dorms. Right. Like just to do online classes. That was pretty much every college. Yeah, every college. Like where's that money? If anything, the federal government should wipe the student loans and say, hey, all these institutions that have just been paying. Yep. Yep. I think you owe us a little bit for your transgressions against these people. You think? Um, my sister made a good point. Like, instead of $10,000, sometimes $10,000 back is one person's entire yeah. student debt, you know? Or if not more. In your case, it's literally, it doesn't even affect you, you know? Yeah. Uh, my sister said, you, could, you should do like 10% of the loan. So, like... Mm. yours would be, it would actually affect you a little better. Yeah, you know? that, I mean, that would help me out way more than it would the person that has a 5000 Yeah, but if um, the person had a $5,000 one, then 10% of that. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. in all fairness, that's probably the yeah. best way to say that, hey, we all around the board, yeah. we're giving, instead of just giving back a regulated part of money, because then when you get back $10,000 and the person only had $5,000 of student debt, they don't give that other $5,000 back. Mm-hmm. To the government. Right. So I, I don't know how, uh, and maybe they just take it straight off the loans. It, I don't think it's going to pass, to be honest, yeah. but I didn't know if you had I mean, solved. I'm happy that some student loans are being taken off, but... But not yet. Not yet. So you don't well, even yeah. be happy yet. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just happy. This is a beautiful time to be a resident because you're making money and your loans have been deferred. Yeah. And there's no interest, I don't believe, on them. I don't think so. Because of COVID and everything. So this is the yeah. prime. I mean, also, you've been having to deal with epidemic after epidemic. So maybe not the best time to be a resident, but you're you're at least safe on the loan's sake. Yeah. Speaking of a new epidemic, I don't. I hope it's not a new one, at least. But have you heard about, like, monkeypox? Hmm. I have heard about it. I guess I know more a little bit about, like, the actual history and stuff of it as more than like where really? I don't know where all I heard was it was it's uh, started in a gay bathhouse in England or something like that. Somebody said that. I'm not sure how factual that is. I have no idea. Or like a not a bathhouse, uh, like a club or something a like bath that. House. I don't know why I said bathhouse at all. <laughs> Okay. I don't know why either. Okay. So it was found in a gay club in England. Yeah, some club. I I know that, for one, human-to-human transfer is usually very, very low with monkeypox Mm -hmm. compared to other, like smallpox or something like that. Monkeypox, uh, usually you can transmit it via, like, large respiratory droplets. But even then, I remember it being, I looked on up-to-date when all this was coming out, and it it was very, very low. And most of the human to human contact is like with one of the lesions. So you can get some kind of gnarly skin lesions. Yeah. Similar to smallpox and cowpox and stuff like that. And if you have interactions with that, you can you can get the disease. And maybe that's what how all this was started to get spread and I do not know that. I know it's super low. I remember I read something that they had only had seven cases of monkeypox in like Europe since 2018. Oh, wow. And then in May, they had like over 90. Yeah. Between like England, Spain, and Portugal or something like that. Because of that outbreak? Yeah, the, it was an outbreak, yeah. Does your smallpox vaccine shot protect you from monkeypox? Do you know? Oh, yeah, baby. We're going to take a second. So COVID vaccines, say what you want or whatever about them. They've been in... In the news for a lot recently. But one vaccine that really needs recognition is the smallpox vaccine. Mm -hmm. It has saved so many people over the years. Smallpox is even deadlier than monkeypox. Like Even in the first couple lines of the up-to-date article was talking about 
how monkeypox is just a less virulent version of smallpox and everything. Oh, wow. I, th- and I think it was less virulent and less transmissible. Oh, no, no. Yeah, uh, the person-to-person spread of monkeypox compared mm-hmm. to smallpox and the mortality rate was less than smallpox. Okay. So it, it significantly – smallpox was terrible. I mean, that killed like half of the – they killed most of the Native Americans mm-hmm. and the Incans and mm-hmm. the Aztecs. I mean, it was really, really bad disease. And we were able to like come up with a vaccine in like the 1800s that was able to eliminate it. I mean, that is super, that was super helpful. I mean, unfortunately, it was helpful for the Europeans to conquer the rest of the world. Yeah. But it also was super, I mean, so many people died of smallpox. Right. I remember I read the story. I remember the story of how the smallpox vaccine was even developed Mm -hmm. was is just an ingenious kind of like story. So smallpox has been around for God knows, I guess, as long as humans have been around. Who knows? And transmissible via, I think, rats and other things like that. That's how monkeypox can be spread. And that's how they think it got to the U.S. is like if a monkey has his bodily fluids or anything, like bites something or anything like that. And, and even if it's like a rat, that rat then has the virus in it and then it gets on a ship and goes across sea. Then that rat pees on a bunch of stuff and then you put that whatever that it peed on in your mouth, now you have it. Mm-hmm. Similar to very, a lot of other viruses and everything. But so the smallpox was also spread in all these different ways and they had no way of stopping it. And then they realized that... But they, there's other different pox viruses around this world. And even then, they knew about cowpox and other pox viruses that made you have these, like, large, nasty sores and everything. And G- his last name was Jenner, I believe. But he... Caitlin. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, like, Ed whatever. <laughs> Edwin or whatever. Caitlin Jenner. <laughs> Caitlin Jenner. Uh, Edwin Jenner or whatever his name was. He he He's, like, a scientist, and he's researching this, and he notices that these milkmaids that have cowpox don't have smallpox. And he's like, that's odd. And so this is what was the most insane. This is how I remember this. He takes a little piece of the cowpox, scrapes it off of her arm, like one of the milkmaids, puts it in a syringe and injects it in his nine-year-old gardener's son. Oh, my God. Yeah, right? Then he exposes said kid after doing that to multiple times after he exposes him to smallpox. Kid never gets it. What? And that's how the vaccine was like developed. So they use cowpox. Then now we've been able to work through it and we have, a, it's totally different. It's not the cowpox virus, they, but they realized that if you have cowpox, the, and your body was able, was, tra- was primed to fight off that virus, then you would never get smallpox. That's a bold move, you know, like that's a bold move. to risk your gardener's son. Notice he didn't risk his own kid. Nope. It was his gardener's son. I thought that that's the irony. He's a nine-year-old kid that's like the gardener's kid. He's like, hey, I'm going to sh- shoot up your kid with a vaccine. I wonder if it was a slave. <sighs> you know? This is 1800 England. It said gardener, I remember when I okay. read it, but I don't, I don't know yeah. specifically. But <laughs> either way, he picked a good – because kids handle that vi- the vaccines better – Maybe there was some method to his madness. Apparently, because it worked. And it worked. Look where we are today. Almost Maybe we should have did that with the COVID vaccine. <laughs> almost every miracle, every miracle in science is almost a mistake that mm-hmm. somebody just stumbles upon and is like, Eureka, like penicillin and all those others. Right. And this was one of those where he just noticed that, and that is, okay, and this is how I'm going to tie it all together. So the similarity between cowpox and smallpox is very similar to the, to the way smallpox is to monkeypox. Okay. And so that's why if you are, the best way to prevent monkeypox is to be vaccinated for smallpox. Okay, well. By check. the CDC, yeah. The best way to do it is to be vaccinated by smallpox. It's, and there was some study, and because there's been multiple outbreaks over the years, and there was some study, and it, it had been recently, where they, they, in like households of people with monkeypox, they realized that if you'd been vaccinated, you had a five-fold decrease in just primary infection rate Mm -hmm. then also so even if you are exposed the first thing they're going to do is give you the smallpox vaccine that's what they're going to do since the only thing there's not really anything else this is like a normal virus right what do what do we do besides let our body fight it off 
the you vaccine. can give the vaccine. Mm-hmm. And in post exposure, you even just give the vaccine. If if you're immunocompromised, so this is a beautiful thing. We learned this in medical school, and I thought never in a million years going to have to remember this until I see it every now and then when I'm looking at like research papers about because I love the history of how you figure something out. Yeah, and I see like they use so there's this genetic recoding thing where you would look at a gene and then you would or like a cell and then you try to find the genetics of it uh, and they use it to find like antibodies and stuff like that. And it's honestly super complicated, but it's an ELISA, E-L-I-S-A. Sure. And yeah, no, I'm, your eyes are going to gloss over. But either they way, they are. found <laughs> in 2003, there was an outbreak in the U.S. And they used this to figure out a, technically they have an antibody, like an immunoglobulin, similar to the way that we have a COVID immunoglobulin. You know how you have monoclonal bodies? Yeah. Similar to that. And if you're immunosuppressed, you get that. But usually they just give you the vaccine and let you sit on it. If you've been exposed. So you literally just get the smallpox vaccine, even if you've been exposed. And then you wait out your symptoms. There you go. One interesting thing I thought about in smallpox is, so the world, this is how beautiful it is. The world has been rid of smallpox, like officially, like there's been small outbreaks, but a world free of smallpox since May 8th, 1980. So since 1980, no smallpox, technically. There's been like small outbreaks. Mm-hmm. There's only two places in the world that hold the smallpox viral strain. Can you guess where they are? Atlanta at the CDC. Boom. Atlanta holds all the bad. <laughs> yeah. It, honestly, Everything bad. if I'm a terrorist, I'm going for Atlanta. Yeah. I don't know why people go for New York. I guess just because the mass of people. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of deadly viral strains in that CDC. Yeah. Uh, the next one... I feel like we couldn't keep them both in the U.S., right? That's just stupid oh, of the smart U.S. Smart girl, smart girl. I feel like it's got to be, let's go back to like the origin, like London or something. Mm. Right? That's the origin. Who else really loves to study viruses? China? Mm. Oh, God, no. No, no, no. I, well, yes, but no. The other person... And they're the ones that are responsible for creating, like, the deadly anthrax, Russia. I Okay, so that was going to be... That was going to be, yeah. And this one is in, it's like a vector institute in... They're just for Kult evil. Solva, Kult Solva, Russia. Ugh. Russia. Theirs is for... Ours is for the greater of mankind. Theirs is for the greater of evil. <laughs> that's, ter- that's a terrible way to... Let's hope to God they both just contain it. <laughs> for the love of God. I Yeah. Prove me I wrong. I have faith in you, Russia. Prove me wrong. Anyways. Um, yeah, the... Can I give you my opinion on this monkeypox? Yeah, for sure. Outbreak. So when I heard it was on the news like a couple weeks, actually almost a month ago, actually, when we were in Miami, and I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck is this? <laughs> you know, because we're, we're basically over COVID, if you ask me. Not everyone's going to agree with me on that one, but yeah, I mean, I'm just I definitely know there. like four people that got COVID within the past week, but besides that, they, they were all fine though. Yeah. Over it, I mean, it's still going around, but people less of in, a frenzy internally are just like, oh, I don't even want to deal with it. That's what I mean by over it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so hearing about monkeypox. I just kind of shook it off, and then the next week I was watching the news, and it came up again about how more pe- people were catching it. And I, honestly, if you want my full opinion, I think monkeypox is scarier. It than really COVID? is yeah, than COVID. Yes. Yeah. So say they come out with a new vaccine specifically for monkeypox. Oh. After all this stuff that has gone down with COVID and getting. F- fired over not getting the vaccine or all this stuff you know you're like concerned that if it was like a full if they're, epidemic again yes instead of like and a, if there's lockdowns people aren't gonna pandemic. follow it people are not gonna follow it if there's lockdowns if there's another outbreak and people are told to get a virus even less people are gonna t- go and get this shot i mean yeah definitely less people will go get this shot considering the fact that there are already have a shot in them, most people. Yeah. That prevent, that already allows some immunity. Yeah. I but, think but that, not even I that. understand not, what you're listen, saying. Listen, though. listen, listen. No, 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 listen. Not even that. 
like they just won't do it, n- not even based on the science, just because of all the politics that just went down the past three years mm, and being yeah. told what to do. So now that we're getting told what to do again. You're like if, if people people no that way. have been already primed for this, mm-hmm. you know, shut down state, they're not going to want to be shut down again. Yeah, they're not – not even they're not going to want to. Yeah. They're just not. I definitely don't think that. I, I also don't think that this is something that needs to even be – people need to be shut down for. Well, if, that's if what people say about COVID too. If they're considering then... it with only 90 cases in the past – and this is literally saying that – well, I'm I understand. About, there is an outbreak. I understand what you're saying, yeah. And that's the concern, right, is now that we've had one serious outbreak protocol that... But was it serious? COVID? Is the question for a lot of people. A lot of people don't think it was serious enough yeah, but every, to do all that. A lot of people... A lot of those people never worked in a hospital. Well, I agree. And I'm with you. I think it was serious and all this stuff. And I, I'm glad I got the vaccine and all, whatever. Yeah. And I personally think monkeypox is going to be way more dangerous than COVID if there is some kind of outbreak, like major mm. pandemic or whatever. My point is, no matter what it is, people, like, say in our hometown, they weren't willing to comply the first time. You think they're going to comply this time? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that political theater played a lot into their decision making in this vaccine. Mm -hmm. And I think that it will carry over to the next one just because or the next one political theater. Mm -hmm. And that's how the way they work. Yeah, Hmm. I think the black plague could come back around and people would be like, no, I don't I'm not getting that vaccine. I'm not sticking that in my body. I really think that would be the case, man. That, that's scary. You can think of people who would do that. My point is just that people being so fresh to the COVID vaccine and the COVID propaganda and all that political mm-hmm. madness, I think the monkey pox could be the worst thing in the world and people would not care. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. Like it, no matter how bad monkey pox is. Yeah. Because of the propaganda and the uncertainty of everything that's been going on over the past like three years, like mm-hmm. people are not as willing to trust science as they have been. Trust their leaders. Or trust the government. Trust yeah. science. Cause like even science is not. That was uh, a bad way to say that. Cause yeah, it's not, science is absolute. That's yeah. the whole point of you doing, you're testing it saying you're trying to find the flaw in it. Yeah. You're literally saying, okay, there's, the only way this can be true is if I've tested it a million ways and it still says that this is true. Correct. That's science. This is not – saying something is science just because you did three studies on it is not science. Right. So I, I guess the best way to say it is the the marketing, the way things have been explained to the general public. Uh, a lot of it has been the news too. The news has been terrible it's for – uh, I mean I remember people were getting just – no matter who said it, what about either side especially in 2020 mm-hmm. you were thrown to one end of the spectrum or the other yeah. and then you know and it's then so black or white now yeah and so hopefully now luckily luckily for the love of god let's hope it's not like mutated into the next pandemic yeah but this one should just be some mild thing that like luckily most people have been vaccinated in a like their best protection is going to be that vaccination Pretty much so, everyone but the anti-vaxxers now. Yeah, the so original, don't go with the original lesions. anti-vaxxers. <laughs> yeah, the original, the original anti-vaxxers. Yeah, the don't go playing with people's lesions. Supposedly, it could be from bad, like poorly washed sheets in hotels. Oh, I don't know about that, but if, you know, because it is from, it, it can be from like le, like you exposure to the lesion. Yeah. So I mean, you know, wash your sheets uh, and. Towels, you know, towels, things like that. Just be healthy overall. Try it seems... take care of yourself, eat the right food, exercise, and that will protect you from a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing how well like boosting your immune system with what you eat and what vitamins and having all the essential vitamins and mm-hmm. exercise and honestly even just feeling happy also helps with your immune system. You know, like feeling that you've got a purpose and doing things during the day. Yeah. that's that goes a long way. So I know we started off on a on a sad point, 
But at this point, with a little silver lining at the ending, you know, this with all these pandemics and everything going on, like this is the time to really take care of your own body, Work your on, own temple, yeah. and make sure you're doing the right things for yourself. Work on yourself, yeah. Yeah. Whether that's mental health, whether that's physical health, and that, that encompasses everything. Like being healthy encompasses mental, physical, what your diet is, and your social interactions and everything. We're social creatures. Yeah. And so we need at least a little bit, no matter what. Yes. And if you're just having online discussions, then I, I think that doesn't help as well. So no. stay healthy, friends. I think we should wrap this up at this point. Yeah. All right. Well, stay healthy, friends, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Hey, everyone. I want to take this time to tell you about our friends over at True Learn. They have this top-of-the-line test bank that is perfect for any upcoming board exams that you may have. They have test banks for all types of exams. So whether you're studying for medical school, nursing school, OT, pharmacy, and others like speech pathology, True Learn is the way to go. If you're like me and going through medical school, they have a question banks for all the big exams, like step one, step two, and step three, with quality assessments for each exam. Look, I know we didn't go into healthcare because we love taking tests. This is the hard part of the job. Make it easy on yourself with True Learn. Sign up now with the code OFFWHITECOAT to get $25 off your purchase. That's OFF white coat, no spaces, to get $25 off your purchase. This is a test bank that you do not want to pass up on. Make this easy on yourself. Take the deal, pass your boards, and get back to enjoying the reason you went into healthcare. And make sure to use OFFWHITECOAT when you pick it up.